Hello guys, welcome back to the Artu Podcast. It's Matteo, your host. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment down below. Let's grow this art community together. And no further ado, let's go on with a new episode. How are you, my friend? Are you good? I'm doing well. Doing well. Yeah. Sorry for all the uh, rescheduling and. Oh, that's fine. I understand. It's, yeah, we live um, two completely different parts of the world, so <laughs> it makes it a little bit yeah. difficult to to organize exactly, this. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, we manage. We manage finally. Are you calling from uh, your studio, or is uh, from your house? Uh, I'm. I mean, part of my studio. It's the. Uh, it's like a shared space. Like I'm on one side of the bar and then the other side of the bar is my basement oh, okay. uh, where my kids and my wife uh, come down to watch movies and things. And I work out here sometimes when I want to uh, be able to work in the studio and also have some quote unquote family time. Nice. Nice. So. Great. No, it's so nice to have a, a proper space, um, especially like it's in, if it's in your house or like in the vicinity yeah. of your house. It's really, it's really important. It's really good. Welcome back, guys, to the Artful Podcast. Um, it's uh, Matteo today, uh, joined uh, by Tim from Illinois. Uh, thank you very much, Tim, to be part of the podcast. Well, thanks for having me on, man. Amazing. Um, we yeah, we ma we managed to do this uh, after after a couple of uh, text days and uh, rescheduling. Um, you calling from Illinois, so a completely different time uh, zone. So, um, but uh, I'm I'm happy to talk to you and uh, curious about your artistic journey, and um. For people that might don't know you, just um, a little introduction about you and um, where you're from, and and then we can start uh, from there. Uh, so I'm from the United States. I'm in central Illinois. So I'm in like the almost the central most part of my state. Uh, I went to graduate school just 30 minutes south of where I'm currently living. I'm a high school art teacher as well as a studio potter, studio ceramicist, however mm. we want to phrase that at this point so i kind of have two jobs as well as uh, as we were talking before the podcast started just i have a home studio so my my real life and my art life collide simultaneously <laughs> all day long so that's nice that's nice um that does it does it affect you um your art life and your normal life um like they do they affect each other or does that kind of like complementary is pretty easy uh to manage the both because once you have your art studio in your home, in your home, it's you know sometimes you you never stop working or yeah you never start working because it's your family and stuff. So um, how can you manage to to is that pretty easy? Uh, it has been difficult at times for short short mm -hmm. periods, but my wife is the most supportive person ever. And when we decided to buy a house here in the area she was always asking where the studio was going to go. And I was like, we don't have to worry about that. We really need to worry about logistics of the family and things mm. like that. And her philosophy was, is that she didn't want to have to pay for another studio, like have the, so we ended up finding this house, which had a really large basement and I took over a small portion of it originally. And it's kind of grown since then. Amazing. And then the family aspect, my, I've been doing art since before we had kids. Mm. So I had to kind of work them in and right as kids grow, their schedules change and things like that. But I have a really open door policy. My family comes down into my studio to talk mm. to me like, oh, we're going here. We're going to do this or supper's ready. So the, it it becomes a really nice flow of like, okay, I'll be up in five minutes or I'm not going to be up for like a half hour. So you <laughs> might as well just go ahead and start without me because I'm right in the middle of something. Mm. So uh, yeah, it's, it's nice, adaptive. It's nice you have, yeah, you have a, a yeah supporting um, family that yeah it's uh, un understands the hours mm -hmm. that he needs to yeah. he needs to spend in the studio. It's good. Um, so um, you said that you you had um, uh, your uh, your background um, in a, did you do art school. Yeah, so I started out living in uh, northern ish Illinois, which everybody's going to assume is Chicago. I was about two hours from there. I moved to Southern Illinois in Carbondale to do my undergraduate work where I got my art ed degree and my ceramics degree and my minor in art history. And then I got married and moved to Central Illinois to do my graduate work. 
Mm-hmm. And now we live just 30 minutes north of that school. Okay. I got my ceramics degree. How was your experience for in, a, in the art school? Uh, I had a really great experience. I, I know a lot of people are like, oh, man, it was the worst time. It sucked so hard. And, uh, I kind of went in and the student that was above me, Casey Hallcoulter, he was about the same age as me. My professors were only a couple of years older than me. And then the person who came in after me was right around the same age. So we we're, we're all in the same stages of life mm. at that point. So we all got along and it was a really great experience. And we kind of all had the same studio philosophies and we worked long nights together and got along really well. Nice. So, um, so you done, um, art school when you were a little bit older, you didn't do it straight away. Yeah. Right? Mm. Yeah. So I come from a family that didn't go to college, so mm. I didn't really think that was in the cards for me. So yeah, I started same. working at some crappy jobs and then friends were like, well, you should definitely go to junior college, which is like a two year school. Mm. And I was like, okay, I'll go there. And I went there for way too long because I didn't have any ambitions to go anywhere else. So I was working full time and going to a junior college, taking all the art classes. And then my friends were like, well, we're going to go to a university. And I'm like, have fun, I guess. And they're like, you should <laughs> apply. And I'm like, yeah. They're never going to take me, but sure, something to waste money on. So I applied and I got in and I was like, well, I guess if they're going to let me come to school there, I should probably go to school there. <laughs> I'll probably need to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I, th- I think that's the best, especially university. Um, I, I don't know if it's the same kind of like age uh, uh, rock when when you do uh, in, in the United States. Um, but basically, you finish the normal school around 18, 19, um, and then you can decide to do university or not here, like in Europe. Um, and I think it's way too early to decide what to do, especially like if you do that university, you have to spend all this money. Because I did university way later, um, when I was 23, I think, 24. So I had a few years of like, I traveled a little bit, I, you know, did all the crappy job that I could, I could done it. Um, and I had some experience and then I, it was a, a full on like decisions for me to start my, basically when I decided to start my artistic, uh, uh, career, uh, when I decided to, to go to university. So I was older and it was a, a decision that I made because I, and then I found people with me that they were way too young and they took that as just, just the university, just spending three years somewhere. Um, they didn't really, um, appreciate what they were doing and I was full on, um, I was going to every class, every drawing session, every, um, try to, yeah, try to study as much as I could. I, I finished with like all like the top of my, on my class. So, um, I was, for me, it was just like a serious decision that I took. Mm-hmm. And if, I think if you do that when you're, when you're later, in any, in any, in any uh, field, but I, f- I feel like art, it's even better if you do it later. Um, if you decide to go to university later, uh, it's better basically for me, I think. Well, I think you phrased it perfectly. It was a yeah. decision, right? It was a decision you made in your in your life. And I think it was the same thing for me. Like I talk about it like it was just happenstance, but like I made those decisions and you made those decisions rather than like, well, what do I do after I graduate high school? I guess I go to the university, mm-hmm. right? It's like, it's the next step. And yeah. you're not dedicated and you don't, you don't have those real life experiences to kind of ground you and be like, oh, this is a real thing. And I really need to do well here because- yeah. I made a decision to come here. So if I fail, this is going to be bad. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, yeah. Especially like when you're young, ever, ever, you you live in this bubble and then um, you carry on the bubble for three, five more years. Um, if you go after, you don't really have that backup slap, this, that's life. So yeah, when you're 18, it's, uh, yeah, I think you need that a little bit <laughs> to yeah. kind of realize what's right. going and on. It, and I spent, I spent a lot of my, my younger time, I spent it at the junior college, which was, we always made a joke that it was a high school with ashtrays. <laughs> uh, and it, it really was because like, we didn't really care about it until went to the four year university. And when I got to the four year, year university in Carbondale, like that was when everything kicked into gear and my equals, right. The people that were the same level of college as I was, they were going out and partying all night and skipping class in the morning. And I was staying up all night in the studio and doing work and like hmm. really hammering down on my craft so that I could make something of my time there. Amazing. Um, so let's carry on with your, you finish university, how you start your artistic career. What was the, 
um, the process that you you start and especially like uh, you because you do ceramic at the moment um, mm -hmm. it was always the same I was always um, uh, your your passion did you start with ceramic or it was painting or drawings or whatever and then it evolved in that um, so how does uh, did the artistic career um, evolved till now Sure. So uh, I think much like any person who likes the arts, you kind of start off in 2D because that's what you're exposed to most easily. And in junior college, I didn't get along with the professor there, so I didn't take any ceramics courses. And when I went to the university, I, I was trying to get my BFA in an art arts related field, and I thought it was going to be sculpture. And they were like, well, you have to take ceramics. And I was like, what if I don't get my BFA? Because I had my backup plan as being an art educator. And they're like, you also have to take ceramics for that. Like, okay, I guess I'm going to take ceramics. That'll work out. Like, it'll just be a one-time class and I can just get it done being over with. And what happened was because I was a little bit of a non-traditional student is the graduate students were my age. So somehow they kind of associated with me and I would get stacks of papers after stacks of papers after stacks of papers from them being like, oh, you need to read this. And they'd come back two days later, like, you done with that? And I'm like, yeah. And like, here's this next thing. And I'm like, okay. So I kind of had that. And then when I went to graduate school, like I said, I had some people that were my same age. So like my professors, of course, are showing and doing that. And the person that was a year ahead of me decided to give me a challenge of who could get into the most exhibitions in one year. Mm. and I applied to so many stupid shows like like juried shows and getting in front of people and when the we're about six or seven months into it and my friend goes well how many shows do you have I said nine how many do you have and he's five how'd you get nine I said well I've applied to like 18 to 20 shows like <laughs> so I've been getting rejected you know and that was that was a good thing like getting rejected from shows but it also helped me learn how to apply, hmm. learn how to make slides, forced me to make really what I thought was quality work at the time. And so that kind of spiraled. So after I got nine, I was like, oh, I'll make a stupid challenge for myself and I'll try to get 12 shows in 12 months, hmm. which means, right, I'm applying to 24 plus shows at least. And I got that. And then I ended up having 18 shows, I think, by the end of the 12 months. I was like, well, 18 is close enough to 24. Let's shoot for that. <laughs> and then uh, it kind of spiraled. So for, I think it was four years. I think I stopped counting after four, but after about four years, I had 48 shows in 48 months and I stopped applying to shows. And, and these aren't like, I'm not going to show in my friend's basement during his, mm. you know, his party. I'm showing in front of jury selections and getting invited to local shows in galleries. Mm. And that kind of just kept going. And I think the the low point of my career thus far was like eight exhibitions in one year, uh, which is a lot, but it just, it forced me to keep making work and keep being in the studio. And the more I showed with people in real galleries and like exhibiting with uh, galleries throughout the nation here in the United States, hmm. the more people would be like, well, you should really apply for this show or, Hey, we have a spot open for this show. Would you be willing to send a piece? It's like, sure. Right. And that all snowballs into this big thing. And I graduate from college and I'm teaching at a junior college. And one of my students wanted to see some of my work. So I brought it in and he took a picture and sent it to his friend and his friend put it on Reddit. And Still to this day, I'm not really sure what Reddit is. Uh, <laughs> all I know is that Reddit launched my career because I went from uh, at noon one day to 7 p.m. the same day as all my work sold out in all the galleries I was being represented by. And now I can't stop making work, essentially. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, I saw your, um, which I want to talk about it because it's a, such a, a big part of an uh, of, of being an artist these days, um, social media, and then we can we can live explore a little bit about that. But you said something that um, which is like you don't know as a naive starting up like um up and like new artist the being rejected and you applying for this um exhibitions. 
first of all, you need to find out that you need to apply. Like you don't know that you need to apply to exhibition when you when you start. <laughs> um, unless, especially like if you don't even do um, university because or like art school, um, they don't really, you don't know that you need to apply for this stuff. And it's basically like hours in front of your laptop of writing about your works and um, sending description and files and um, all this like, presentation about your work which is a completely different like work that you're supposed to do than be an artist um, it's more like office job basically and uh, you need to be prepared to do that and you don't know um, but the being rejected like oh, so many exhibition that you're going to be applying if you start um, and you be rejected it's, it's it can be really hard on you and it, like can kind of like bring you down and um but that's that's what it is. Um, like people don't know about you, and you need to make them want you, basically. Um, and uh, yeah, for for young artists, it's a it's a slap in the face because you have no idea <laughs> that you have to do that. Well, and I think as young artists, right, like we're kind of taught to like apply to a exhibition, mm. right? And when we get rejected from that one, we're like, oh man, that sucks. Like I don't really want to apply to the next one because I'm going to get rejected. And so it kind of starts this downhill slide and you're right, right? Like doing multiples allows you to do the writing. It allows you to know how to formulate everything. And I think I was in a position where when I was challenged for my friend, he asked me to, you know, who could get in more shows? Well, that's not a, that's not like a super like high risk situation. It's like, well, to get into more shows, you have to apply to more shows mm. and get rejected from more shows. And I wasn't worried about the rejections as much as I was worried about the exceptions, mm. like getting accepted to shows. So I had, right, I had the big stack of rejections and I had this little stack of accepted pile, you know, but that accepted pile was bigger than my friend's accepted pile. And that's all that mattered to me at that particular moment. At the time, yeah, yeah. Right, it's which, a, yeah. That could be a good uh, a good way to, to start this whole process um, yeah. for young artists. So if you're listening, like challenge your artistic, your artist friend and... You can you can see what what you can do. Um, so oh, social media. Let's talk about um social media. Uh, you have a, a nice presence on Instagram where I'm, I met you and I saw your 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 artwork. Um, and how do you deal with that? Because um, it can be a lot. Um, like sometimes uh, you need to learn how to do reels. So you need to learn how to speak to the camera if you want to speak. If you want to be there in like front face um, uh, for people. Um, you need to know when to post, when, what to post, the trends and the whole that. Like, how do you um, learn and deal like these days uh, with that? Even because it changes every month, the algorithm and everything. So, um, yeah, how how is the social media for for you? Well, I this is another situation that's going to seem super weird. Is my friend told me that I should be on Instagram, and I was like, I don't want to be on Instagram. And she was like, You really need to be on Instagram. And I'm like okay, I'll go on Instagram. Like, and I didn't know how to do it. And you're talking about how, how to manage the algorithm. And, you know, it's changed so many times over the, the length of time I've been on there. And my first big lesson was frequency, mm. figuring out when and how much to post. And I listened to a whole bunch of like business people talking about how to use social media and when and where to use it. And I just kind of pushed all those videos into one i was like okay i have to post one time a day and i have to have stories on at least two to three times a day and then it's like okay so i started with that and it started with a post-it note next to my bed it says have you posted on instagram today <laughs> it's like no i gotta go back down the studio and then it turned into an alarm for a long time on my phone it sounded like eight o'clock i had that too as well <laughs> yeah <laughs> my whole family would be like oh it's time to post on instagram <laughs> yep it is um just to have that frequency and then you're right too it's like time of day matters sometimes and like i found that the instagram tells me one time but it doesn't always hit but i know if i post at the same time every day mm. everybody knows oh tim's gonna post at 10 30 his time every day like they know something new is coming out and then it was a lot of trying to figure out hashtags and it, it seems silly and people are like hashtags are dead. I'm like, I don't think they are. Like every time I go to use the same old hashtag, right? It's growing and growing and growing. 
And then it switched from doing still images to doing reels. And it's like, it is hard to learn how to do the reels and have like a presence on the internet. Hmm. But also you can turn that still image into a reel. All you have to do instead of like me going to my studio to shoot a picture of the sculpture or the mug that I made today, all I have to do is make it spin, take a short video, put yeah, some little yeah. cheesy audio on it. Like that's all it really takes. And right. Like I see the posts about people complaining about, well, I don't understand Instagram and they're changing the algorithms all the time. So I'm just not going to post. And I'm like, well, if you want it out there, you have to, you kind of have to listen to them and do whatever they want. Cause what they're trying to do is keep everybody on their platform for the longest period of time. Hmm. So in turn, right. If we listen to their algorithms in theory, they should also be on our profiles the longest amount of time, which means they're viewing our content, which then turns into customers or it turns into like, Oh, I've seen your work before when you go out to shows and like really like your work on Instagram. It's like, okay, great. Yeah. And yeah. I, <laughs> it's, um, you know, it's adapting to the, um, to the, to the today, basically, um, as an artist. And I don't think uh, I, that was me as well at the beginning. Like I didn't want to be on social media. It's not really my thing. Like I'm pretty sure like most of artists are kind of like pretty much the same. Um, they don't want to be that social and, uh, um, <laughs> they don't want to, especially like they don't want to post about their stuff because it's a, it can be really intimate. Okay. You're usually, especially at the beginning, you're pretty shy. You don't want to, uh, overshare. And even when you do exhibition, it's, difficult it's weird that people are looking at your stuff so usually that's the vibe that artists are going for um but it's uh, most of my commissions most of my sales are from social media right now and it's um i do exhibition obviously it's something that every artist should do and um but i do project and stuff like that but yeah social media it's uh, the biggest um it's where people are contacting me to sell and uh, to ask me for commissions and stuff like that. So um, I understand why somebody can be a little bit um, not that easy to jump on on it, but there's so many ways to use as well uh, social media. You don't really need to use it as everybody else. You can find your own weird way to use it and your more comfortable um, way, way. You can use Instagram or you can use YouTube or whatever. And yeah, so... I think um, you kind of have to yeah, adapt to the times. Tomorrow, something else is going to come out. And if it helps your business, um, why not? Like, you need right, to yeah. you need to embrace. Um, but I still don't understand TikTok. I don't think I'm never going to will. <laughs> <laughs> and I cannot use that app for whatever reason. That's not... Yeah. I cannot understand that. <laughs> well, and, and let's also let's also agree. Like we've we've skirted around and not talked about the social aspect of social media. Yeah. Is I've met and talked to so many great artists via DM just because I'm like, oh man, I saw your work. It's really great. Just want to let you know, you know. And then I start following them, and then they're in the area, so I get to go to their shows, or I find out, you know, I'm going to be in the same area that they are, mm. or I'm driving through their hometown. I I've busted into some. Uh, ceramic people's houses being like I'm in your hometown I'm going to be over in 10 minutes and they're like <laughs> thanks for inviting yourself but sure come on over right uh, and that's kind of how I found out about you and your podcast is like I was following Natalie and she mm. was on there recently and I was like oh that's really cool that's a really great podcast like nice you know, and and those connections happen and I, I think some people people look at social media as this weird thing where they shouldn't talk to the people they're watching mm -hmm. like or true, following true. or whatever it's it's weird. Like, yeah no, it's true the whole point is that we're connecting right you're in berlin i'm in the middle of illinois we're two drastically different times of the day <laughs> but here we are talking just because of a, a silly app on our phones yeah it's true it's um uh, that's the feeling of yeah and it's like a window i'm watching but i cannot talk um Obviously, if you're talking to like a make, if you want to talk to a mega superstar just because you're watching it, it's probably not gonna happen. But people like normal people like us, that um, that could be used as a, an amazing tool for connection and especially as uh, as an artist, it's so important. That's why the, I started even this podcast. Podcast, it's uh, 
uh, I was missing that uh, community aspect because I started during the pandemic. Um, and that's why I started this podcast. I wanted to talk about art. I wanted to explore uh, the artistic minds that are around uh, the world, actually, because I interviewed for people from Nigeria, from U the US, um, Spain, from all over the place. So um, it's, it's, it is a really good tool to connect um, for artists and to talk about art um, because you can talk about art with your family until a certain point and then they're like okay can we move on can we change yeah, subject exactly. at some point or that's gonna be forever <laughs> so every day so yeah it's a really it's really nice um it could be used in a really nice way um so a uh, team i don't want to take too much time of your day um i would like to ask you um i try to ask this about uh, to every artist that i interview um if you have um a little advice or um something that you want to say to younger artists or to artists that are um uh, watching right now um it's yeah it's on you uh it's gonna it's gonna seem real cheesy but make everything uh i had i had a professor that told me to be in the studio all the time didn't matter when what time of day he told me eat there told me read there uh and essentially what happens is you end up making and that that hesitation to be like oh I'm, i don't know if i'm going to want to make that like that hesitation is mm. what you need to get rid of and if you just make whatever you're going to make and whether it's good or bad you'll figure out that through making more of those things making more of those types of things so just make nice so the exploration aspect of uh, being an artist is so important it's so much fun it doesn't matter um i was so um precious with my every single artwork that i was doing at the beginning and i wanted to be the best masterpiece ever every time and then i realized that it doesn't really need to be like that it can be for fun as well it can be because i want to just do it it's the whole exploration that you were saying it's so important for an artist especially for a young artist then to find your voice the code the so-called uh voice that you you need to find as an artist and to be you when you you make your your art so yeah really really good advice really important um if you want to um plug any um social media go ahead it's um uh, it's t it's at Tim ceramics on pretty much everything as far as social media goes i have a couple exhibitions one in baltimore uh, and then I'm participating in a spring uh, sale that, or exhibition, I guess not sale, exhibition with a companion gallery. And mm -hmm. then just keep following me because I have more stuff rolling out pretty much monthly. So Amazing. I will put all the links uh, in the description so it will be easier for people to just go and um, support uh, team guys. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, I want to grow this uh, art community uh, on YouTube um, and like Spotify and everything. So... Um, thank you very much, team, to be part of the podcast. That was a yeah, really I appreciate nice, your time. That was a really nice talk. Amazing. All right. Take care. Take care.